All right, so that's the question here. It says, consider below questions which can be answered simply by using Gauss's law and symmetry. And using symmetry can be uh, difficult at times, and it's may, I think I make this assertion many times. Difficult questions are ones where you have to exercise creativity, um, where you are not just following a mechanical procedure. And symmetry-based argument, unless you happen to have them memorized, in which case it can be mechanical, unless you happen to have them memorized, it tends to involve a lot of freedom and creativity. You have to kind of look for the right symmetry. And there isn't some fixed procedure through which you find the right symmetry. So because it involves creativity, it, it can be a more challenging um, unless it's a question you have seen and you simply memorize the particular symmetry approach. So with that introduction, let me start. It says a point charge Q is located at the center of a cube whose lengths are of length L. Okay, that's not that cube there. So let me draw the cube that they are describing, which is a cube of length uh, capital L. And it said the charge is located at the center of the cube. So let me do that uh, around here. Again, the challenges of uh, representing three-dimensional things in two-dimensional, you have to imagine this is at the center of the cube. There's like distance to the faces there, so there, it's at the center-ish. Um, it says, uh, if there are no other charges in the system, what is the electric flux? I ah, hear this, uh, one face of the cube. All right, um, so if you want to do this the brute force way, that's gonna be challenging. Let me just put it out there that way, because your electric field uh, at different points on the surface are at different distances, they are at different directions. So when you work out the dot product with a normal vector, it's all complicated. So you don't wanna do it that way. <laughs> the way you want to do it is um, see what kind of symmetry you can exploit. I think one symmetry you can exploit is that the charge is located at the center of the cube. So whatever picture you have, for the electric flux through one surface, think it's gonna be the exact same flux through any other surface. It's gonna be the same numerical value. There's a rotational symmetry there, and this is what I mean by symmetry. These two surfaces here that I just shaded, you can actually swap them by a rotation operation. Imagine taking the cube, rotating it um, counterclockwise by 90 degrees. Then let me label this A, label this B. Surface B goes onto the location of surface A. Now, as you imagine doing the transformation to the entire system, what I hope you will realize is that when you do that rotation, you haven't actually changed anything. The charge, point charge in the middle didn't move, didn't, nothing happened to it. What that means is whatever flux is associated with area A has to be same as the flux associated with area B because there's a symmetry operation. There's an operation we can do which leaves the system unchanged but swaps the location of those two um, surfaces. So the only way the whole thing is self-consistent is if this flux is equal to flux through area A. You can make this exact same argument with all six surfaces of the cube, which means I can now make this argument that the total electric flux through the um, entire cube is gonna be the six times flux through one of the surface because the symmetry dictates that flux through one surface is the same as flux through the on any of the other uh, five surfaces. So, so once you have that relationship, then the rest of the question is easy. You have, um, you have expression for the net flux that's given by Gauss's law, which says uh, four pi Coulomb constant times the amount of charge enclosed. In this case, it's just Q that's equal to six times the flux through one of the surfaces. So flux through one of the surfaces is four pi Coulomb constant Q divided by six. And you can simplify this a little bit. 
That's the answer. Let me plug that into verify. Or pi times Coulomb constant times Q over six. Good. Okay, um, so A was a bit relatively simple introduction. B takes more creativity. <laughs> so let me get to B. And, uh, and I guess I wish I had the time to uh, give people some time to think about uh, the question, but I think uh, since I'm already <laughs> over my one hour at seven o'clock, so <laughs> let me jump right into it, not, um, not waste any time giving you time to think about the question. Um, so it says, a charge Q is placed, and this time it says uh, one of the corners. Uh, charge Q is placed at one of the corners of a cube as shown below. And uh, find the magnitude of the electric flux through the shaded area. So as you look at it, I hope you realize that we don't have the same kind of symmetry that we did before. I can't say based on symmetry that the flux through this area is same as flux through any of the other areas. In fact, you can quite clearly see from your imagining of the electric field that flux through this area here that I'm drawing vectors inside of and flux through this area that I'm also drawing. The flux there is zero. In fact, there's one more surface here that flux is zero through because electric fields are just all pointing parallel to the plane. Um, there's a flux through here and flux through here. And is there enough asymmetry there? You know, there might be enough asymmetry there to uh, think that the flux there is the same as the flux through that other corner. But I, I think uh, what the difficulty you will run into is when you try to work this out, maybe, you know, calculate the net flux using Gauss's law and divide it by three, then you plug it in, it says it's wrong. <laughs> so uh, there's uh, something that you're missing there. Um, so, so I do like to present a different picture for consideration of symmetry. This is the picture I would have you consider. Let me move this a little bit over so that I can draw my picture better. The different picture that's good to consider here is one that's given by um, uh, drawing an auxiliary figure. So instead of imagining this as the whole cube that you're considering, consider it as a part of a cube. In fact, I want to place this charge Q at the center of this new shape that I'm considering. So I think I am actually thinking of a cube that's a twice as long on one side, which actually means it's a cube that's going to be um, volume-wise eight times as big as the or original cube here. So cube of length of side uh, 2a is what I'm considering. So when you have that cube in mind, oops, I don't know how to draw my cubes. Um, so when you have that cube in mind, then you see a kind of a restoration of the symmetry that we had before. So if we have net flux out of this charge Q here, then I can say for each one of these six surfaces that, um, that you know, this, if the flux through that surface is V1, then I can say six V1 is the net flux out of this uh, larger cube. Okay, so I can express this V1 the same way I did it for part A. Now what you have to consider here is that, okay, so considering this area here, V1 is not the uh, flux through the area that we want. This is the area that we are considering. And um, I hope you have enough intuition about symmetry to realize that a flux through this area is exactly a quarter of a phi one. If you have that intuition, then great. That's correct intuition. That gives you a correct answer. Now, if you want to be more mathematically rigorous, then you can imagine another symmetry information, uh, symmetry operation, which um, rotates the system in a way 
that um, doesn't actually change the system, but it kind of changes what area you are considering. So I can imagine a rotation operation around an axis that's going through charge pointing that way. So rotation this way, kind of. And as you imagine rotating the curve 90 degrees each time, you will see this, uh, you will see this area move over to this portion of the square face, and then this portion of the square face, and then this portion of the square face. And as, as you do that 90 degree rotation operation each time, you're not actually changing anything, which means the flux through this particular quarter of the area should be same as flux through any other quarter of the area. So, um, so that's where you would get this uh, expression in a mathematically rigorous way. So um, I think uh, chaining these two expressions together, I think I have an expression for the, um, um, so I, I have to say this is equal to phi, uh, I don't know, one quarter. <laughs> so let me write this down. Uh, so, um, so phi one quarter is equal to one fourth phi one, or solving it for phi one, uh, phi one, that's the same phi one that's written there, is equal to four times phi one quarter, plug that in there, then I end up with expression phi net is equal to six times four times phi one quarter. So phi one quarter is equal to phi net divided by six times four or uh, 24. Uh, phi net, I have expression for that from Gauss's law. This should be equal to four pi times Coulomb constant times the charge enclosed. So let me plug that in. It looks like it's a, yeah, yeah. let me just plug that in. Um, so four pi, yeah. Four pi Coulomb constant times charge enclosed divided by 24. And I can simplify, I don't have to. And that gives you the correct answer. And uh, you know, if you were trying the first approach that I said wouldn't work, I guess what you have to figure out is that this charge at this corner here, if you're trying to do Gauss's law with just this cube, you have to basically treat the charge as being effectively only an uh, eighth of the charge being placed into this particular eighth of the cube. But I think that particular argument is, is a bit complicated because it involves basically dividing zero by zero you know, you have point charge, which has zero volume, and it's at a corner, and all that's complicated. The argument I prefer is this argument, where you extend the volume so that you actually do enclose the charge completely. 